hello students so today we are getting across with our uh, uh, fifth module there okay so of your operating system that is all regarding uh, wherein we are studying regarding three different three different sections across here so one means we are coming across with a mass storage structure then second we are studying regarding protection and the third one which are coming across is with a case study of linux operating system okay now we have successfully completed across with a module 4 okay so it was again and combination of two different uh, sections which you have studied there okay one happens to be virtual memory management and the second one most important was here how is a file system being managed or how a directory structure is being managed there okay, so let us come across with the very first one that is mass storage systems so you all are coming across here to know uh, almost these sections uh, some of these sections you have studied in your very first semester that is regarding how a disk storage happens or is how one hard disk operates that okay, is all things that a okay, little bit we are studying across apart from that okay so we are studying regarding an overview okay disk structure then you all are coming across with disk attachment disk scheduling disk management and uh, lastly we are coming across with a swap space management there okay these two sections are not there for your syllabus so of course i'll be are not covering uh, those uh, set of things there let us come across with the very first one okay so uh, an overview of your mass storage structure says that you have heard regarding magnetic magnetic disks now okay what is this magnetic disk usually magnetic disk provide a bulk of secondary storage as you all are aware with that okay disks of course you know that they come in uh, different uh, speeds or else it can be different sizes there okay So you can just say that each disk platter has an flat, circular shape like CD. Okay, so you can just refer this particular block diagram for the same. Okay, each disk platter has an flat, circular shape like CD. Okay, the two surfaces of a platter are covered with a magnetic material. Okay, these are covered across with a magnetic material. That the surface of a platter is logically divided into circular tracks. Okay. these all are divided into circular tracks now okay so these tracks will be having individually the sectors okay what are these sectors now which are subdivided into sectors each sector is a one which is holding you and basic unit of storage there okay and the set of tracks which are at the at one arm position makes up one respective cylinder you can just see here this makes up one respective cylinder there these are called as platters to you okay Uh, this is how your arm assembly takes across okay your read write header okay which places across on each of these magnetic disks and the rotation happens there okay so this is how the things are been divided across in terms called as tracks it can be sectors cylinders okay the number of cylinders in the disk drive are equal unto number of tracks in each of the platter okay how many cylinders do i have how many tracks do i have on each of the platter so that is equal to your cylinders which can be formed there okay so there can be something around thousands of uh, concentric cylinders in a disk drive okay and each track may contain around thousands of hundreds of sectors there okay so each the storage capacity of disk drives is usually measured in gigabytes there okay so you all know how is the working of this okay the head moves from the inner track of the disk to the outer track when the disk drive is operating the disk is in a rotating at a constant speed there to read or write the head must be positioned at the desired track and at the beginning of the desired sector on that particular track okay so these are some uh, extra some added information along with your magnetic disk set it says that it rotates at a speed of 60 to 20, 250 times per second there the transfer rate which happens across okay of the data flow at which the data flow between the drive and the computer that is called out as your transfer rate positional time is we usually take it across as random access time is nothing but is time to move disk arm to the desired cylinder okay and uh, wherein we come across with a seek time okay and the time for desired sector to rotate under the disk head so this we call it across as a rotational latency okay so ultimately our main motto is my seek time should be reduced as far as possible okay so the time to fetch from the desired sector sector should be reduced there so that itself you guys have studied across in your 
scheduling algorithm is there. Of course, a part of it you are studying in your further slides of this also. Okay, there is one more term which will be coming across, and that's called as head crash. What do you mean by this? It is a one which is resultant from when we have this disc head making contact with the disc surface. Sir. Okay, so at that time we say that that's very bad, and we call it across as a crash of your respective head there. Okay, head crash. Okay, discs can be removable. Okay, drive attached to computer can be done via input output buses there. Buses varying. Okay, you have different varying of uh, bus types there. Okay, it can be ATA, SATA, USB, fiber channel, ACSI, SAS, FireWire. Okay, host controller in computer uses buses to talk to disc controller built into drive or storage array. Okay, so this is what how you are uh, moving up. Moving up of your head disk works. Sir. Okay, so let us come across further. Okay, so now let us come across little bit more to know regarding your magnetic tape. What is this magnetic tape now? Magnetic tape is ultimately keep in mind it is nothing but a secondary storage medium. Okay, it's a permanent memory and can hold large quantities of data. Okay, the time which is taken to assess the data is uh, usually large compared. With that of the magnetic disk there. Okay, so because why? Because the data is assessed sequentially here. Okay, it is something like when the nth data has to be read, the tape starts moving from the it moves from the first and reaches the nth position, and then the data is read from the nth position. There. Okay, it is not in a magnetic tape. It is not directly possible. It's not directly possible to move to your nth position there. So tapes are used you know, used mainly for backups. Or is it can be it can be used for uh, where you are having infrequent use of information, sir. Okay, so these are some details about your magnetic tapes, sir. Okay, so the same thing what I said. Okay, so we say that the SS time is quite slow here. Okay, it, of course the one greatest advantage is it holds large quantities of data. Okay, but a random SS is something around thousand times slower than the disk there. Okay, so these are some uh, details that the typical storage can lie between so and so. These things. So let us come across with our uh, main uh, interesting section. So that is the yeah, structure of a, a disk. There. Okay. So what's the structure here? Always keep in mind each disk platter is divided into number of tracks, as we know. Okay. And each track is subdivided into sectors. Okay. Into number of sectors. Okay. So and we know that a sector is the basic unit where a read or write operation in the disk can happen. So usually, your uh, modern disk drives, whatever are there, okay, they are usually addressed as a large one-dimensional array of logical blocks. There, okay, where these logical blocks, whatever I call, is the smallest unit of transfer. There, okay, so we usually say that this particular uh, one-dimensional array of logical blocks is mapped onto the sectors, okay, in a sequential format. There, okay, sector zero. Is the first sector of the first track on the outermost cylinder. The mapping records in order. Uh, it it goes according to the order there. Okay, sequence sector zero. Then it comes according mapping proceeds in order through that particular track. Then the rest tracks in that particular cylinder there. Okay, then through the rest of the cylinders. It moves go on outermost to innermost. Okay, logical to physical address. Okay, so what do we what do we address? Okay, should be easy here. Okay, except for Bad sectors, or else we say that non-constant number of sectors per track via constant angular velocity. Okay, so let us come across uh, how usually your uh, disk structure works, or else how your disk structure architecture can be uh, divided. Okay, it can be divided into two types. Sir. One is called as CLV, and one more is called as CAV. Okay, CLV stands for for constant linear velocity. Okay, and it is angular velocity. CLV, the best examples for disk structures wherein your CD-ROMs or DVD-ROMs work based on this particular particular architecture. Part, okay, so wherein the density of bits per track is uniform here. Okay, the farther the track is from the center of the disk, the greater is its particular length. Part, okay, so more sectors it can hold. So as we move from outer zone to inner zone, the number of sectors per track goes on decreasing. Part, okay, this is the Usually, uh, whenever we burn a CD or something, it it starts out from the outermost, okay, to the innermost. Part, okay, so there are same number of sectors uh, in each track. Okay, the sectors are uh, densely packed in their inner tracks. Okay, 
the density of bits decreases from inner tracks to outer tracks to keep the data rate constant. Okay, it is actually in a reverse way, vice versa way of your CNP. Okay, that is with CA. Okay, so these are uh, the two main uh, divisions. Okay, so wherein how your disk structure architecture works. Okay, next let's come across with an attachment to your respective disk. Okay, you can have an SS of these uh, computer uh, SS uh, data in two ways okay one is you can have it through input output ports okay that is i can call it another way as host to store host attached storage else one more is i can have it remotely that is remote remote host okay in a distributed file system i call it a more appropriate word for that is nas there that is network attached storage okay host attached storage is the one which is attached through your input output ports uh, talking to the input output buses there. Okay, so one best example for this is your uh, SESI. So that is small computer system interface there. Okay, so uh, wherein even your uh, the um, things which are used across. Okay, so here the cabling systems are SETA. SETA stands for your serially attached technology attachment there. Okay, and fiber channels. Okay, these are all things which are used here so that the typical desktop PC uses an input output bus architecture okay so that can be the architecture which can be supporting maximum of two drives per your respective input output bus okay so wherein we can say that your fiber uh, channel okay can be with a high speed serial architecture which it can have with it okay it can consider your storage area networks as an example okay csi is a bus architecture as we know it all okay an improved version of this architecture is the basis for your storage area networks there. So let us come across in more detail in your further slides there. Okay. So one happens to be with uh, the same storage area networks. Before that, a uh, little bit, we'll come across to know what do you mean by the storage array. Okay. It can be just attach of disks or array of disks here. Okay. Storage array, uh, as you all know, what do you mean by an array there? Okay. Similar, it's an array of disks here. Okay. Storage array has controller which provides features to attach to ports there. Okay. Ports to connect host to arrays okay memory controlling software a few to thousands of disks okay these all things are possible across in a storage area okay let us come across with an example of your storage in area network okay it is common in almost large storage environments there multiple hosts hosts are attached to multiple storage arrays here you can just come across this is our san here san is a build up of multiple storage arrays here Okay, it's not one or two. I have many, multiple of it. Tape library. From them, the data is being assessed through the server. Okay, it can be uh, through a data processing center, a web content provider. Through that, through a LAN or a WAN, it reaches the clients. This is how your SAN works. Okay, so SAN is one or more storage areas there. Okay, as I said, it is connected to one or more fiber channel switches. Okay, so. Uh, storage made uh, available via uh, LAN masking. Okay, so uh, that stands out like cross with your uh, um, local uniform uh, networking there, okay, which forms specific arrays of specific servers. Okay, easy to add or remove storage, add new host and allocate it to the storage there. Okay, or uh, low latency fiber channel fabric. Okay, uh, these all things are the part of your storage area. So let us come across with one more, okay, the uh, second uh, kind, okay, so with the storage data network, keep in mind storage data network is nothing but it's a private network, okay, which is connecting servers and storage units there, okay, it lies mainly uh, in flexibility, okay, multiple hosts, okay, multiple storage uh, arrays can all be connected across in a dynamic fashion there, okay, so uh, wherein I'm even using fiber channels to have an interconnections okay, between your uh, that's between your SAN. Okay, so let us come across with the, the second type that is network uh, network attached storage there. Okay, what is this NAS? NAS device is a special purpose. Okay, so that is I says remotely over a particular uh, over a network. Okay, so client SS so there can be you can just see that there are client SSs which are happening across through a LAN or a WAN. Like a client SS NAS via a, a remote procedure call interface. Okay, your RPCs are carried via, it can be your TCPs can be used there or as UDP, okay, on an IP network, 
okay usually uh, the same lan okay carries all the data traffic to the clients there okay wherein i have my nice nas storage is there okay and through that the attached storage provides a convenient way for your respective computers to share a pool of storage files there it is sharing some pool of storage files between these respective clients there okay it which is which are remotely attached to the respective file system this is your uh, what do you say network attached to it let's come across with the next one that's with disk scheduling okay what do you mean by disk scheduling okay disk scheduling is nothing but uh, you all know that operating system is the one which is responsible for using hardware efficient okay so that is nothing but as i said you minimize the seek time as far as far as possible seek time is now directly proportional or else it is equal to the seek distance now okay so you will come across with a term followed here as bandwidth okay disk bandwidth is nothing but the total number of bytes transferred divided by the total time between the first request for the service and the completion of the last run which has happened okay so this is with your disk bandwidth okay so let us come across what are the uh, sources okay there are many sources of disk input output request that we can live from os okay it can be from system processes okay it can be from the user processes there we have we had an good enough uh, uh, classes on the schedulings okay you have come across in your very second module there regarding your scheduling algorithms before that by and scheduling is required and all these things there okay so input output request includes input or output mode okay disk address memory address number of sectors to transfer it should have all these information sir okay let us shift directly with the uh, the different types of disk scheduling algorithms sir okay almost all of you are aware now you have uh, come across with the uh, algorithms which are mainly used here okay so we are coming across with the, in our further slides we'll come across of course fcfs okay shortest seek time first okay scan is an algorithm c scan okay then we are coming across with c loop as an algorithm okay now let us come across this is an example which i have considered here this is a request queue okay the analysis this is a real time example which has been taken here the analysis is true for one or many platters here from request queue lies between 0 to 199 this is the request queue here okay and the head pointer where my first request will be starting from okay head of your respective uh, uh, your respective disk will be lying across is at the pointer 53 from here the disk scheduling starts here okay let's come across with the very first example of fcfs fcfs says that it is first come first serve okay so what will happen here this is my request so it is my 53 is my head pointer so what what it will do it is least bothered about all the things okay as soon as 98 comes it directs to 98 first then from 98 it says 183 okay let me move to 183 from 183 come back to 137 okay come back to 137 then 122 then 14 then 124 then come back to 65 66 okay so in this particular thing okay it shows that total head movement of 640 cylinders takes place here Okay, and I can just say that the seek time, which is considered here, is quite. Uh, you can just say that it happens to be. Of course, it's the simplest form. Okay, but here it uh, it does not take any extra care to minimize the overall seek time. Okay, so uh, this was with your FCFS there. Let us come across with the second example. Okay, that is SS uh, TF. Okay, that is shortest seek. Time faster, okay. Which is having the shortest one will be given the first priority there. Okay, so just come across here. Fifty-three is just at a header, which is the shortest one now. It is with fourteen. Okay, no, sorry, one second. After fifty-three, which is uh, the next shortest now, instead of going ninety-eight, after fifty-three, which is the shortest, it is sixty-five, which can be reached easy from fifty-three. It is sixty-five. Then from sixty-five, it can reach sixty-seven. Okay, fine. Okay, from sixty-seven. Okay, so uh, where the uh, where can we move across? If the disk head is initially at fifty-three, okay, the closest is at the cylinder sixty-five. Okay, as you know, then sixty-seven. Then which is the nearest to closer to this? Okay, nearest closer to sixty-seven is thirty-seven. It comes back to thirty-seven. After thirty-seven, the nearest closer one is fourteen. Okay, after fourteen. there is no other option you have to get back to 
the next cylinder here that is to 98 okay then from 98 to 122 128 to 124 124 to 183 okay what does your shortest seek time first does is it selects the request with the minimum seek time from the current head position my current head position is here minimum is this minimum is this then minimum is this then minimum is this okay so from here okay so again uh, shifting directly to 98 is nothing but that's a next nearest one okay next nearest to 14 uh, uh, that cannot be 122 or 124 or 185 so of course it is by it is 198 so here we come across with an total head movement of 236 cylinders okay and uh, of course it's an uh, improvement over fcs uh, fcfs but uh, i cannot say ultimately that it is an optimal one okay let's come across with the next one that's a scan or else in another way we can call it as an elevator elevator as an algorithm there here what happens is the discount starts at one end of the disk okay and moves toward the other end okay servicing request until it gets to the other end of the disk where the head movement is reversed and servicing continues okay its main uh, strategy is it starts out from the uh, one respective end to an another end okay then again it reverses and again the scan continues okay so uh, here you can uh, just see that but keep in mind uh, the requests are uniformly dense large largest density at the other end of the disk and those wait the longest time okay you can just see here 53 okay so i'll be start my ultimate motor is i have to start back with the starting end now so in the starting point how many will come i will just fulfill them all from 53 i come back to 37 then 14 then i'll reach with the zero from zero my request goes to 65 67 98 122 124 183 okay so here it is uh, something like wherein I can just say that if the head is moving towards the outer track, okay, so it ultimately services all of them. Okay, at cylinder, you can come across that at cylinder 199, okay, the arm will reverse, okay, and will move towards the end of the disc servicing track. Disc servicing 37, then 14. Okay, the scan is also we can call it as an elevator, as an uh, algorithm. So this is one more as an uh, 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 thing what we can uh, come across there. Here keep in mind my ultimate motor is my head track. Okay, The head track is moving towards the zeroth track. From here it starts. Okay? Then let's come across with the next one that is C-scan. C-scan stands out for circular scan here. Okay, Cir Circular scan algorithm. It's an variant or else an advancement towards your scan as an uh, designed algorithm there. Okay, it's more uniform wait time is provided here. Okay, it moves the head from the end of the disk to the other servicing the request along the way. Okay, when the it reaches the other end, then again it immediately returns to beginning of it without servicing any request from the return time. On return, it will not service any kind of request there. Okay, you can just come across here. 53, 65, 67, go back to 98. It will not go back in a reverse way like this. It will not come to zero sector and then go back. Okay. Why to go back to zero? Simply waste it. 65, 67, 98, 122, 124, 183, 199. When it has reached 199, in between, I found here 37 and 14. These were the two requests which had to be headed, but it has not provided them. Okay, what has happened ultimately? It has moved towards the zeroth sector from here. Again, it started to 14 and 37. So, this is called out as a circular one. Okay, so uh, it is uh, uh, quite very uh, different here. Okay, keep in mind that uh, here it is not servicing, it's not moving as in your previous case of scan. It moved towards the zeroth sector and then the provision started, but here it moves to the end of the section first then again comes back okay it goes ultimately according to your data okay uh, you can go across with an algorithm which best suits that okay so let's come across with the next one that's with the uh, c loop uh, scheduling algorithm okay so what's the c loop algorithm is look uh, is a version of scan okay c loop 
is a version of C scan. Okay. So here arm only goes as far as the last request in each direction, then reverses the direction immediately without first going all the way to the end of the disk. Okay. Can just come across here. 53, 65, 67, 98, 121. Here, after 183, what had happened? It had reached 199. It will not reach now. It will come back directly to 14. Then it comes back to 37. It does not go back here to 0. Okay. It comes back after 0. What is the first request? Okay. It comes. It comes there and then it reaches to 37. Okay. This is how um, it, uh, it differs across with your C look as an algorithm okay so yes selection matters a lot okay so always keep in mind your disk scheduling algorithm selection is uh, you come across that the sspf is the most common one and as a natural appeal okay so shortest seek you'll be taking across okay second one is scan or c scan okay of course it performs better look out for less starvation here okay Performance depends on ultimately the number and types of requests. Okay. Requests for disk services can be influenced by the file allocation method there and metadata layout. Okay. This, this scheduling algorithm uh, should be written as a separate module of the operating system there. Okay. So wherein different algorithm if necessary. It has to be replaced there. Okay. Either SSTF or look is a reasonable choice for the default algorithm. Then let's come across, we have now studied with disk uh, structure, disk attachment and all those things. Now let us come across with disk management, disk scheduling, okay, everything. What do you mean by disk management now? Disk management and a better uh, term for that is disk formatting. Okay. So what is this disk formatting? The process which is uh, for dividing the disk into sectors and filling the disk with a special data structure is called out as low level formatting or else I can call it as a physical format. Okay. Each sector whatever is there, it can hold the header information plus data plus ECC. It holds three information with it. One is information, one more is data, header information, one more is data, one more is ECC. Error correction code. Okay. It is usually of 512 bytes of data but can be selected apart from that. Okay. So to use a disk to hold these particular files, okay. So what it requires is it record it uh, records its own data structure on the disk. Okay. For that, you are going to make a make across with the partition. Okay. Partition the disk into one or more groups of cylinders, each treated as a logical disk. Okay. Logical formatting, or else I can call it out as making a file system based on the requirements there. Okay. To increase the efficiency, most file system group the blocks into clusters. Clusters are nothing but wherein I have a similar kind of a data or a similar block of a data, I take them together and I call it as one cluster. Disk input output done in blocks, file input output done in clusters. Okay. This is your disk management there. Okay. For this disk management, you are uh, coming across with um, a uh, term. Uh, okay, As I said just now, with a boot block or as you can call it as a, uh, as a bootstrap loader there. So boot block is a one which is used for your disk management there. It initializes the system with two things there. What are those? Bootstrap is stored in ROM as we all know that. This is a very initial program which is run as soon as you switch on the system. The bootstrap loader program stored in boot blocks of boot partition. Methods such as sector sparring used to handle the bad blocks. Okay. Let us come across here. Booting for an example which is taken across for a boot block. Boot block is nothing but when a computer is switched, okay. So, as you all know, that a bootstrap program is run, okay. The bootstrap program initializes the CPU resistors, device controllers, main memory, and then stacks the operating system. This is what is the process of a bootstrap program, okay. It locates and loads the operating system from the disk, okay? then it jumps to the jumps to beginning the operating system execution. The bootstrap is stored in only RAM, ROM, sorry. Since ROM is only read only, okay, so that's why it cannot be infected by any kind of viruses. Okay, so that's why this happens to be one of the most uh, secure. Okay, a full bootstrap program is stored in the boot blocks. There. Okay, one example of Windows 2000 is taken here. Okay, wherein I have a system which places its boot code in the 
first sector on the hard disk that is MBR that stands for, for master boot record. Now what is this master boot record? The code which directs the system to read the boot code okay, and the partition paper. Okay? Uh, what it has within it. Okay? MBR always contains a table listing the partitions for the hard disk and a flag indicating which partition the system needs to be booted for. So this is what it is holding. One is boot code, one more is partition table, which has to be loaded now. Partition 3 has to be loaded. This is an example. Okay. So the last one is regarding swap space management. Okay. What do you mean by this swap space management? Swap space management is nothing but uh, the amount of swap space needed on a system can be usually uh, depending on the amount of uh, on the on the amount of physical memory. Okay. The amount of virtual memory it is backing. Okay, virtual memory uses disk space as an extension as we have come across in our prior classes also okay so the one process which is uh, not required at a time being okay we swap that particular process okay and we get the process which is actually with a requirement there. okay we move it into a virtual memory okay packing store okay we keep it okay less common now due to memory capacity increases there, okay swap space can be carved out of the normal file system okay it can be separate in disk partitions. Okay. So one example of swap space management is taken across here for your uh, Linux. Then. Okay. Linux is quite similar to uh, the working across uh, the working of swap space management of Linux and your Solaris are one and the same. There. Okay. So kernel uses swap maps okay, to track the swap space used there. Solaris 2 is the one which allocates the swap space only when a dirty page is been forced out of the physical memory okay, and when the physical and when the virtual memory page is first created file file data is written to the swap space okay until write to file system is requested okay other dirty pages go to swap space due to no other code okay test segment pages are thrown out so you can just come across this is my swap area this is my swap partition or swap file wherever wherever my swap map is there okay, okay wherever it finds across now one okay fine zero it happens to be an uh, dirty page okay so dirty page is nothing but a swap is required for this a swap is required for this okay these are the one which are being allocated with the pages okay so this is a data structure for swapping on the linux system so, okay this is the end of your chapter 10 that is of uh, mass uh, storage uh, structures there okay in the next video you will be coming across with protection thank you